Hi, I'm Avni and welcome to Perspectives. Through this series, I want to explore different artistic styles, intentions and the role of cultural influences in Indian art through the theme of the portrayal of women. I hope that this episode gives you a glimpse into the numerous facets that go into the creation of a single piece of artwork and makes you understand and appreciate the thought process of the artist. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the representation of women in mythology as goddesses. We have with us today Ms. Gayatri Sinha. Ms. Sinha is an editor, art critic and curator based in New Delhi. She's the founder director of criticalcollective.in, a knowledge portal on Indian visual culture. As an art critic, she has written a column for the Hindu and has written monographs on artists including Krishan Khanna and Himmat Shah. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've seen the presence of this icon of women goddesses in Indian art for centuries from temple sculptures to miniatures and classical art. And I wanted to know what artists are trying to convey through their depictions of the feminine divine and why it's such a common theme across Indian art. There is uh, there is the notion of uh, the divine feminine which is very important and um, in hindu thought you have the concept of the nirgun and the sagun all right the nirgun is the one which has no attributes you can mm-hmm. worship god through uh, prayer you know through mantras even through the yantra which is a geometric representation but then you have the sagun where they have attributes and this particular picture the gods offering weapons to devi from the jaipur school it's a beautiful miniature it refers to uh, a very important um, foundational sort of episode in the Devi Mahatmaya. Uh, all the gods go to Vishnu, Shiva and Brahma and they complain and they say we, we don't know how to continue and the entire balance of the universe is being destroyed. So the gods, the three gods sit in, in a triangular fashion and you know um, through their rage but also through their prayer emanates a great light. And that becomes a column of light and from that Devi is born. So what you're seeing in this picture is that all the gods are surrounding this uh, emanation of the mm-hmm. divine feminine. And you need the divine feminine because here you see there's a failure of masculine energies. The male agencies have all failed. The Devi will compensate. But what the gods do over here is that they give her whatever attributes they have. Yeah. So you have, you know, so somebody is giving her all her her great weapons, Shakti, Shul, Parash, uh, you know, they, everything is being donated to her. So in this painting, um, the Devi, she's sitting in a ring of fire. So what is that significant of? This is significant really of her, her the way she's born, the way yeah. she emanates. And uh, also her, uh, the, if you notice that the fire is in a triangular formation, mm-hmm. And these triangles are very important because Shiva and Shakti are both represented in the yantra in a triangular form. So um, now if we move on to the next couple of slides, we have the manifestations of Shiva as different goddesses specifically. And we see how even within the manifestations of only Shiva, the way the goddesses are depicted and their personalities are very different. So for example, here we have Parvati, we have Gauri, we have Durga. And then we have Kali later on. So yeah. I was wondering that like if you look at say this painting of Durga, we see that the goddess appears to have her militant and auspicious aspects on the same spectrum. So yeah. how exactly does this come about? So if you just go back to the two previous slides of Parvati and Gauri. Yeah. So this is, you know, she's of course, she's. Uh, we just saw her emerging from the fire and we know that she has the attributes of uh, all the the many weapons. Don't forget, Durga has up to eighteen arms in her. Yeah. You know, really, Virat Swarup. But she's also Parvati, which is the goddess of the Himalayas, uh, mm-hmm. the daughter of the Himalayas. And here she is, uh, the wife and the spouse of Shiva, and she's domestic. There is a domestic, maternal, nourishing, nurturing, and um, uh, profoundly feminine aspect to baby as Parvati. Uh, so this is where you see her as you know, going to be driving the trident into uh, the buffalo demon. And there are these different emanations which come out of him. And also we know that this is a, this is a painting which has also been uh, uh, passed very well into the contemporary domain. So you should also look at the work by Tayyab Mehta on mm-hmm. this subject, if any of you are interested in contemporary art. So after speaking about Durga, if we move on to Kali. So yeah. 
how do we exactly understand the role of kali and how does she relate to the other divine feminine energies because her portrayal is drastically different from the others like if yeah. we compare her to durga she has a garland of heads and yeah that's right and the skirt of seven arms if you look yeah. at it you know and the tongue is outside so she is a very interesting goddess because you never you hardly ever i mean i haven't seen any representations of kali in a somya a uh, gentle form like we just saw parvati you know we don't yeah. see her like that she's always energetic she's always active there's a this this positive sense of striding forward here you can see shiva is lying on the ground and um, the, uh, kali represents the uh, the energetic form of durga in the need to restore order so when uh, durga is fighting with uh, the asuras her forehead darkens with anger Mm-hmm. it becomes absolutely dark and uh, we see at that point there is an emanation of kali the goddess and that you know from that blackness of her rage kali is born we are looking at sculptures we are looking at classical painting but this you're looking at is a popular poster this would have been produced in bengal say 100 years ago or around that time yeah. and these presses these presses began to produce these in very large numbers for lower middle class middle class homes where people earlier might have had sculptures but now because of the uh, vast spread of printing particularly in yeah. bengal from the 1850s onwards these chromo lithographs etc began mm-hmm. to really proliferate and these were then objects of worship or yeah. they were even you know kali images would be put on to biscuit tins or soaps or match boxes because the popularity of this powerful pro- she's a protector you know she yeah. she can protect you in times of great duress uh, protect you against death uh, and she's also seen as a nurturing mother so that mm-hmm. is really the aspects of kali was this is a terrific painting i mean i was so stunned when uh, uh, my uh, editor shared it with me because mm-hmm. if you look at durga she's always uh, the the aspects of her beauty her control her militancy her energy they all come very well together in miniature painting kali has the thirst for blood in yeah. battle and she tells her that with your long tongue you consume the rakta beej manifestations and that's exactly what we're seeing and look at the way the artist actually makes the tongue go right across the painting mm-hmm. when we talk about modernity and we talk about um, you know aspects of invention or abstraction i think this miniature artist at this point could do this very very beautifully So if we move on from the manifestations of Shiva to other goddesses like for example Lakshmi and then later on we even yeah. have Saraswati so right. we see how all of them have very specific symbols or objects like Lakshmi has a lotus and Saraswati is seen holding a veena and has a swan next to her um and we see how these symbols are sort of repeating across the different paintings and sculptures so yes. i was wondering what these symbols represented for each okay. of them so this is a really important sculpture because it has so many of her important qualities mm-hmm. the base the pedestal is the lotus which she's placed on and that is suggestive of the fact that when you're on the lotus you are above all the pollution all the mm-hmm. um, the aspects of worldliness etc and that is how lakshmi is placed in the seated posture the two hands of dan and abhay mudra are really important here one of course is that she is prayed to as the goddess of wealth so and the other is abhay which is the upheld form which is to be fearless and that is what she is encouraging you to be so saraswati as we know is seen as the spouse of uh, brahma yeah. so here these three goddesses of uh, uh, lakshmi durga and uh, saraswati complete the sort of female trinity along with uh, vishnu mm-hmm. uh, shiva and brahma and she has the attributes of the intellect all the purer arts are um, manifest in saraswati that's why you will always see her with the veena because she's the goddess of music all musicians in india uh, everywhere would you know see saraswati as their titular goddess yeah and i've seen that you know like you were saying all students in india till they they see saraswati and so even in contemporary times this idea of divinity and shakti has remained constant despite the change in like societal structure and social mindsets 
so for my last question could you perhaps like shed some light on the significance of goddess worship and its relevance in modern day india and how it's still depicted in indian art to the century i think i think there is a great continuity and there's been an efflorescence of goddess worship because it's also because the goddess is seen as um, shakti uh, shakti is an attribute which you can gain through worship you can gain it through yoga you can gain it through um, the pursuit of uh, deep knowledge etc around the goddess the important thing about shakti is uh, it's in the there one of the sentences in the devi bhagavat puran is where the goddess is speaking to her bhag she says if you become weak at any point you don't say i have lost my vishnu or i have lost my shiva you say i have lost my shakti so shakti is the sense of um, absolute energy parakram initiative resolute resoluteness uh, and the ability to achieve in that sense and um, it, it is for this purpose that as we enter into more and more challenging times uh, there is a great rise of feminism there is a great rise of gender uh, equality and the need for uh, a sense of parity across classes as well uh, uh, because don't forget that the goddess also is worshiped by every class in india she's mm-hmm. just not a brahmanical goddess she's worshiped by uh, all indians of every of every strata of society and this is why we see her relevance her aspects of her worship are becoming so pronounced i think it's been extremely insightful and i've learned a lot about the different manifestations of devis and shakti and what each of them individually represent so i just wanted to thank you so much for being here today and helping me understand this better you're welcome afi thank you